My name is Amy Sniffen and I'm a PhD student in the Dartmouth Robotics and Reality Lab and today I'll be talking about drop assembly of interlocking puzzles. The goal of this work is to develop a foundation for building structures by dropping individual components into place with the ultimate goal of drone-based assembly. It can be useful for drones to drop interlocking components into a structure. Firstly, dropping does not require a high level of precision from the drone. And secondly, interlocking removes the need for a drone or human to apply mortar or an adhesive to the structure. Additionally, interlocking components make structures stable, while also permitting future disassembly. In this work, we design blocks with features that only require gravity to pull them into place and provide examples of interlocking structures built using this method. The first step towards achieving interlock is specifying block constraints. We use two types of blocks with prismatic joints at different angles. In this example, we consider joint angles of 60 degrees and 30 degrees. As shown in the figure on the left, bottom pegs staple two blocks together in the layer below and connect laterally. Depending on their arrangement, the prismatic joints can lead to an interlocked system or a system that is not interlocked. As shown in the video on the right, this is an example of a system that is not fully constrained, and so the blocks can separate. To prove that structures are interlocked, we consider subsets of blocks. In this example, we use four block configurations as our subsets. The last block placed is bound to the structure. We call this binding a key, and the key prevents this last block from sliding back out of the structure. A key is required for a structure to be interlocked. Using the figure on the left as an example, we see that we can recreate the red section, the blue section, and the middle section as separate structures. By extending these individually interlocking structures, we can create larger structures with just one final key on the last block. In this video, we used a relatively low precision robot arm for assembly to show the feasibility of our dropping model. And now that we've seen how interlocking works, the trick is to design a structure that allows interlocking while dropping from only one direction. The blocks in the previous slide have lateral connections that must be inserted horizontally. By adding sloped edges to the blocks in strategic locations, we can permit downward motion to be converted into sideways motion, which is necessary to achieve interlock. The blocks shown in the video have the same constraints as their square counterparts, but each peg is inserted vertically into a hole. We also note that the angles of the joints are now 45 degrees and 90 degrees. As long as the angles on the blocks are different, we can achieve interlock. We also built larger structures by hand to verify that the formulation works, and it almost does. The final structure shown on the right is fully interlocked, with one key on the upper rightmost block. Now, I'm able to hold the structure unsupported, but due to tolerances between the pegs and the holes, it does have some flexibility. Particularly, you can see flexing in the bottom left quadrant of the wreath, and so we want a way to understand how flexing affects the overall interlocking of the structure. Based on the constraints posed by the blocks, we've built a linear model of the error and show how flexibility aggregates across the structure. The error arises not only from the tolerances between the pegs and the holes, but also from gaps between blocks. In the video, a possible force is applied to the last few blocks added in the upper left corner of the structure. The bottom left block is fixed to the ground. We then plot the difference between the optimized and original positions. The darker the block is, the larger the possible motion the block will have in response to the applied force. We can see that our particular design choices have an effect on how error accumulates, and so we need to develop a relationship between tolerance and interlock. To that end, we plan to analyze how the angle and size of pegs and the size of gaps between blocks affect the flexibility of the structure in future work. In the current formulation, we have only considered 2D structures, and so we'd like to extend our system to 3D. And since one of the main motivations behind the system is drone assembly, we plan to use a drone or an AUV to build larger structures. Additionally, we would like to implement a more algorithmic method for designing components to better account for contact effects between blocks. If you found this talk interesting, please send me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions or just chat about where this work is going.